Kinder. Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to welcome you to Thoughtful Thursdays. I hope you brought your drink, hot or cold. Uh, yeah, Barbara always fusses at me that I say that we should have a, a hot drink. Um, but it is Thursday morning, and we are so excited. We have a wonderful guest today. Her name is Trista, and she's going to tell us a lot of the different things that she does and how she's changed her life and what she does to help people be better with their lives. But before mm -hmm. I bring her on, uh, I want to introduce you to my wonderful co-host, Miss Barbara Ellison. And Barbara? Good morning, everybody. Yeah, Thoughtful Thursday. Uh, you know, this show is about what, and you know, this morning, Carol and I were talking just in the, before, the, and we were just talking about so often people get caught up in what is their field of expertise and it's like, but, but they, well, they just do it. Yeah, but there's chances are there's somebody out there that really needs to hear about your field of expertise. So that's kind of what this show is about. All th things from people from all different walks of life of what are we, what can we do, especially as women? The Dalai Lama says that this decade is going to be the decade of the woman. So let's all join forces and help you to be the the best version of you, a happier you, a healthier you, a more financially secure you, whatever that means to you. So I'm so excited to have Tristy here because she's going to talk about what she does, her field of expertise, and, and the journey that it's taken her on through her life. And that's a, sometimes hearing other people's journeys can be absolutely life-changing just in themselves. So Trista, welcome so much to Thoughtful Thursday. Thanks for coming on. And tell us a little bit about you and about your journey to and what brought you here. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for having me on. I mean, I'm excited now to hear about my journey and what <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it's quite exactly. a buildup. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Right. So, yeah. So my name is Trista. I am a Canadian. I am working in Lebanon. I have been a humanitarian aid worker for the past 20 plus years. So it's taken me around the world, working in places such as Angola, Sri Lanka, Yemen, Kosovo, um, Iraq, and, and now Lebanon for the past six and a half years. So I've been working primarily with uh, refugees. And then more recently, the last couple of years, I have entered the life coaching area as well. So I am working full time in my day job as an aid worker, and then part time as a life coach in the evenings and weekends. And I've been working with women who are feeling stuck, who want to change their lives, move forwards and and create a life that they that they truly want. Right. You know, and, and and isn't so cool. Yeah, and I mean, look at all the places. The thing is that common denominator. Mm. We all want something more than exactly. than what we have right now and we're not quite sure how to get it. Yes. Yeah. And sorry, and, and yes, and I say yeah. And I tell people, if, if you're feeling like you're meant for more, it's because you are. So let's find out what that is. Right. Well, let, let's back up a little more to your child. You know, how did you, how did you become an aid worker? That, that, that always fascinates me, you know. And sure. You, you yeah. From Canada. And of course, we're both in the States. Barbara originally is from Canada. So give yeah. us a little bit more of that background. Sure. Well, I became interested in travel at a young age. Um, my parents traveled and then my dad took me to Paris when I was 16 and I was bitten by the travel bug and that, that was it. I was done. I, I knew that whatever I did had to involve some sort of travel and, and living abroad. And I also had an interest in international affairs, international politics. So when I did my undergrad, um, when I went to college, I did political studies. And then I spent a few years traveling. I taught English in Korea. 
And then I did an internship in Central America in Guatemala and Honduras. And then I went back and did my master's in international development and just started working abroad ever since. I guess I just, you know, it just, it was the perfect marriage of travel, international affairs, and, and doing work that was, was really meaningful to me and, and to others. And I think that's one of the biggest keys you mm. said right there. Find the work that's meaningful to yes. you. Yes, yes. So often. So yeah. you started in Asia, well, started in Paris, but then Asia and then uh, South America. How did you end up in Africa? Just that's where the job took you? It took me, yeah. So I got my first posting. I was a, a United Nations volunteer in 2003, and I went to Angola. And I was there for a couple of years and then just sort of started moving around. You know, the aid work is is typically we spend a couple of years here, a couple of years there. So I, I did. I started I started moving and I just I've just never stopped. And yeah, I've been so Lebanon now for six and a half years. Previously, it was Iraq. Prior to that, it was it was Yemen. So, yeah, I've, I've spent a number of years in the Middle East now. Why? Right. Right. Where was your favorite spot? Where has been your favorite spot, do you think? Mm. Well, they're all so different and they've all been so unique. But I do have to say I've really enjoyed Lebanon. It's a it's a very complex country. It's got a lot of challenges. It's not necessarily an easy place, but the people have been lovely, the culture, the I mean climate the mediterranean climate the country is very beautiful the food is fantastic very vibrant it's it's got this its own energy to it so you know but i i i feel that everywhere i've gone people have been amazing and and so welcoming so but but definitely this has been a very special posting for me i've found it very difficult to leave <laughs> obviously six years yeah <laughs> So did your wanting to help women grow out of the, and I said Africa, I meant Middle East, but mm. from seeing the Middle Eastern culture and it's, I mean, it's what, what, what precipitated you wanting to help women better themselves? Right. So, I mean, one of the things that struck me very early on um, back in the 90s was when I, I mentioned I went to teach English in in Korea and I landed up doing some teaching with a group of university students and I think some of them if I remember correctly were doing their PhDs and we would just have this conversation style dialogue you know talking about our lives and that so they could practice their English and I remember a few of them mentioning to me how lucky I was because I could go anywhere and I could do anything and I could make the choices that I wanted to because basically in their culture, they had they would have their PhDs, but then once they got married, that was it. You know, oh, wow. they, 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 they were done. Now that might have changed. I mean, now it's been, you know, several, sure. couple of decades. But right, so I mean, but certainly that struck me at the time that how how fortunate I was to to have the choices that I that I have, and I certainly wanted to help empower women to realize that they also have have choices, and and I know I, I you know especially working in the Middle East and whatnot, sometimes there are some cultural. I don't want to say challenges, but certainly norms that make it a little bit more difficult. Um, but but that being said, you know, we still do have the power to respond and to how we want to think about our lives and how we want to think about ourselves. And that in and of itself can be quite empowering. And so then once I sort of got into life coaching, I started to talk to women and I, I really hadn't decided what niche I was going to pick. But 
one of the themes that kept coming up was, you know, they women were telling me that they were feeling stuck and that they had spent most of their lives putting other people first yeah. and, you know, sort of now wanted to think more about what they wanted and what they wanted to do with their lives. Some of them have been through divorces. Some of them are empty nesters. Um, some of them were looking to change careers. And so I felt that life coaching was ideally suited to help women to understand that they can let go of the past, reframe the story that they've been telling themselves all of these years, understand where they have their power so that they can make choices in their day-to-day -day lives about how they're showing up for themselves and within their relationships. And then, you know, forming a very strong relationship with themselves, mm -hmm. cultivating greater self-trust, self-confidence, self-love, worthiness, all of these things we need to start building the life that they truly want. So we start to look at, well, what does your future self look like? Who do you want to become six months or a year from now? What does your life look like? What goals do you want to set? These are things that, you know, traditionally we, we don't spend a lot of time thinking about, right? Like if you ask somebody like, what do you truly want? They'll sort of not be sure. So let's get really clear about who you want to become. What does your life look like? Let's go after that. Let's create that for you. And that's right. the work that, that we do in coaching. Right. And it's, and when one of the, one of my favorite questions to ask people is like, cause they'll, cause they'll, you know, like, well, what do you do? And they'll tell me everything that they do. Okay. Mm. So that's wonderful. But who are you within that? And so often they look at me like, what? That's what you do. That's what you're doing. Who are yeah. you within that? Right. And so often they don't know. And yeah. because they, we, we, because we haven't talked, we haven't talked about it. We haven't thought about it. You know, we've always been, you know, like for, in my case, I was a daughter and then a wife and then a mother and then a divorced failure. So you talked about the women that are divorced. Well, then mm -hmm. I was a success again and because I was a wife again. And then I mm -hmm. was you know, a grandmother and a business owner. And then I was a widow. Mm -hmm. Who was Barbara in all of those labels? Yeah. And that I think that was one of the, I think that's one of the things that uh, that I can really hear that that's who you work kind of work with because that's where I was. It was like mm -hmm. I had no idea who I was. Right. And what do I want? And I've got you know my father lived to be one hundred and two. Uh, I had long you know and I have longevity in my family. It's like oh brother, what am I going to do for the next thirty years? Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. let's find out well so yeah. many yeah. people at that point sit end up sitting on the sofa boat watching bon, watching soap yeah. opera, eating bonbons because they don't know what to do yeah, men and women they right. don't know what to do after they have retired or changed or the kids have gone to school or moved out whatever and mm -hmm. so they think well I, my life is over but that's mm -hmm. to well uh mm -hmm stuff that they that they know that they can do that they can share right. and i think we're coming into a time where there'll be a, a a big shift to where people value that again in in the u.s typically when somebody gets that age they get put in a nursing home or assistance uh -huh. or a uh -huh. retirement center you know it's like it's like they they can't they don't want to take care of their house or can't take care of their house so their kids go oh well you need to be in a retirement center and they think well yeah I've got my room I've got my friends I've got housekeeping mm -hmm. and so they think well that would be great that's it for the rest of my life yeah no mm -hmm. it does not have to be that way people but for the most mm -hmm. part, it's just a, a you know next step to the nursing home true true and uh, that's what I said. Just so many women out there are finally realizing they're waking up to, hmm, there could be more. Mm -hmm. 
There is. And, there is a lot more out there. Yeah. And what can that and what that more is for everybody is different. Let's say what people say to me, well, you're you're doing what? Well, I'm building a I'm building a wellness business and a coaching mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. And people well, why why are you doing that? You because I can. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that we have shows. You know, and oh have, yeah. You know, you have you have three shows? How do you do that? And yeah. so yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. The world no. is your oyster. It's true. It's true. Yes. You know, if you just really start thinking that anything is possible right. and just, you know, I always tell people explore, make a list of 25 things that you're you're interested in in trying. It can be anything at all. Like, you know, just because it looks a little bit interesting, a little bit fun, put it down and you know, pick one and just take the next right step, right? You don't have to know all the hows. You don't have to know all the details. You want to know, you know, where you're going, but you don't have to worry about figuring it all out. You just take yeah. the next right step and the next right step and you just keep going, right? The, the people that are the most successful are the ones who just keep showing up and keep going. Well, don't give up. A coach somebody that can lead you in how to do that. Right. Uh, most of our listeners realize that I came out of the model and talent industry. I had an agency and I used mm -hmm. a teacher that would come in from California to teach my students in the acting field. And he was amazing. He was a, a award-winning director, but those people can't teach in California. So they, they, I have multiple of them that have come into my office to teach. And one of them, Part of his teaching was saying, you have to hone your craft all the time. Every single day you hone your craft. And that's the same thing as honing your 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 life. But Charlton mm -hmm. Heston, who is extremely famous, used to go to him for coaching because he stayed abreast of his craft. He learned, mm -hmm. you know, even after he was famous, he took classes between each film that he did. And mm -hmm. so we need to be that as women as as and as people, men, women, because we have both that listen. And it doesn't matter how high of the pinnacle you've gotten, there's somebody, and somebody even may be lower on the pinnacle that has a nugget you need. And mm -hmm. so to listen to lots of teachers and to learn from a lot of people, if you listen to a whole hour podcast and you get one nugget out of it, it's a successful broadcast. So don't don't think, well, I, I've heard all that before. Well, then listen a little harder. There will be a nugget. I don't mm. care who you're listening to. There will be a nugget that you can take and put in your life and hire a coach to help mm. you notice those nuggets. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they talk about when you're filling your calendar or filling your life, you put the big rocks in first. And then you put the little rocks, and then you put the sand, and the sand will fill in around. Well, coaching is a big rock. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe a middle one, maybe a middle rock, depending on where you are in life. But, you know, you have your things that are immovable, like, well, like God, family, that kind of stuff. And then you start filling in with other smaller mm -hmm. ones, and then down to sand. I mean, sand is the, you know, the people you meet in the grocery store. Those, those are in your, your little funnel and they're, they're in your life and it's a moment in life and take time to enjoy them. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. And one of, one of my favorite sayings is that the four worst words in any language is I already know that. And so often I hear that. Well, I already know that. Well, yeah, no, but somebody else on it everybody ever or teach somebody else on it or everybody has a different way of saying the same thing true and once in a while you can hear just a different nuance of wording or phrasing or mm -hmm. whatever that is and all of a sudden it's like it takes you like i loved what you just said take the next right step mm -hmm. That can, that little, aha, oh, that's a different way of saying it. That's the way, oh, that's, that's the direction I need to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And that's one of the things that has really opened my eyes to listening to all sorts of different people from all different walks of life. Because you never know what they're going to say and right. how they're going to say it. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Oh, and it starts your brain and our brain knows how to ask good questions. It will always look for an answer. Mm -hmm. So rather than saying, what's wrong with me? Oh, what can I learn about this? Such a difference. Mm -hmm. Such a difference. It's true. It's true. Yeah. So yeah. What, what do you think has been the most challenging thing to, you know, because now you work, you know, you do international. Mm -hmm. Um you think has been the most challenging aspect of working internationally? I think it's been understanding that no matter what the external circumstances are, I can be happy. Mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the aid work, you know, we tend to live in very challenging conditions um, you know, it, it varies from place to place, but some, some of them can be very challenging. When I first did my post in Angola, I was out in the bush. Like we had to fly out. We had to box up our food. We had no running water. We had a generator, we had a satellite phone and that, that was it. And, and since then I, I've, I haven't ever gone back to that particular situation since, but you know, it all varies and each context has its brings its own challenges right and what i see is that a lot of aid workers tend to move around a lot right because they they're in one place they get fed up and then they think okay i'm going to go to the next place because the next place is going to be better mm -hmm. and the truth is it's better for you know a couple of months because you sort of have that honeymoon period where it's new and it's exciting and it's different. So it's fun, right? But then you settle back in just the normalcy of, of day to day life. Day to day. Yeah. And so so I think just one of the things that I've I've had to figure out was that it doesn't matter where I am. I can be just as happy here as I can be anywhere else. Like my capacity to be happy is exactly the same, no matter where I am. And once I figured that out, then life just became a lot easier, let's say, anyway, a lot more enjoyable, you know, like I'm not looking for the next thing because it's not going to be any better there. It's just not, right. Right. you know, and I can, you can have personal preferences, obviously, you know, but it's not going to make you any more happy. It's not going to make you happier than you can be right right now in this moment, in this place. So, well, and there's the whole I thing just, about what you focus on. You yes. Know, you're focusing yeah. on the fact that you don't have running water as mm -hmm. opposed to the fact that you do have box mm -hmm. of food. You know, you do have, sure. I would just think, maybe lush surroundings and and such as that so you know your happiness i mean joy is from within but your happiness is a choice that that comes in into your you know your your knower uh and so it, it you can choose you know if it choose to choose you this day you yes. know and you know this is the day the lord's made i will rejoice and be glad in right. it. you have that choice no matter how extreme your circumstances are now no running water is pretty extreme Having yeah to fly out to where you are no you know probably bugs and stuff like that those are extremes but most of us don't live in those extremes most of us have a pretty pretty comfy life if you compare it to all the places that Trista's been mm -hmm. you know, that, that, and yet those so often if they say that during the depression Many people who've lived through the depression here in the U.S. Uh, say that was the happiest times of their lives. It was sim it was simple because there wasn't anything. Yeah, it's a common thing. Everybody was yeah. in, nobody had anything, so there wasn't trying to you know keep up with the Joneses because there were no Joneses around, and mm -hmm. 
you know, I mean, there were the wealthy Rockefellers and stuff, but most people didn't see them. There, there wasn't Facebook, so you didn't have them in your face every day. Yes. Uh, you know, there wasn't TV uh, for the most part. They had radio, so they didn't know how people dressed. So how you dressed was how you dressed. And, uh, yeah, it, it. sometimes I think all these trappings that we have around us are make it harder for us to be happy and harder right. for us to choose where we need to be, where we need to go. Yeah. So. And one and one thing for me uh, is that I always say, don't compare your everyday life to someone else's highlight reel. Amen. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. And I think so often we get caught up in that. Yeah. Well, and mm -hmm. we interviewed a gentleman the other day, and it one of the aha that stuck with me from that interview is he was like a he was an ad man in New York. I mean, he was like top yeah, of the high up, and then ended up in California as an actor, and now he's in Mexico. So uh, <laughs> definitely, you can go see him on our channel. Uh, but he made the comment that it takes thirty seconds, three thirty second spots, to totally change a person's trajectory. trajectory. Good or bad. Not good or bad. Three. Good or bad. And think about the, the, the ads and stuff that are just coming at us every which way, especially in this country, just moment by moment. There's no mm -hmm. reason why people are running around like this. <laughs> it's like, don't know where they're going. Yeah. Don't know what they want. So Yeah. So Trista, this has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Just I uh, yeah, I uh, love your loved your the just the travel of it. Yeah. Not something you know, but but you know what? I've always said I would like to travel, but I tend to be a bit of a homebody. So just you know, I've been places, <laughs> but to actually go and live for extended, ooh, I don't know. But I uh, but I have loved listening to you because I could just live vicariously <laughs> for just this half hour through you, and that's the beauty of it too. If you yeah. want to do something, read a travel journal of somebody that mm -hmm. is doing it. See True. if it's for you before you take the plunge. Absolutely. Yeah. There is yeah. a wealth of information out there. So thank you, Trista. This was great. I'm so, yeah, not still not thinking something I think I can do, but you know. <laughs> Well, yeah, you. no. Well, thank you. Thank How you do very much. Get a hold of you if they want to to check out your services. Tell tell them on. So, there. Yeah, so the best place is my website. It's tristagurton.com. So it's T R I S T A G U E R T I N.com. And I also have my own podcast called This Daring Adventure. And I have my own website for the podcast. So it's just thisdaringadventure.com. Hi, I'm going to have to go watch an episode. Well, you go watch it. Yeah. Thank you. But thank you so much, both of you, for having me on as a guest today. It's been a this real pleasure. Fine. This was fun. So much. We appreciate it. So everybody, remember you need to circle up. Let's keep that going. Don't don't be circling down. Talk to you soon. Bye. No, hey, Carol. Carol. What? What are we doing? We're are you telling tell everybody to like us, share oh, us? Yes, I, yeah. <laughs> She's falling down on her job. You know, I am. I am. <laughs> so on Facebook, be sure to like, comment, and share. But we're also on uh, YouTube since the holidays, since the, the end of the year. We're on YouTube. So please go uh, find us there, Mavens of Motivation. And while you're there, please subscribe, ring the bell, share it out to your friends, and also comment. And you can reach any of the three of us by coming on, on the shows that on this show and we will reach out to you. Yes. Bye. Have a great one. See you next time. Bye-bye.